Hello, and welcome to the Sunday meditation at the Light Institute of Galisteo and the Sanctuary of Light. For those of you who are joining us for the first time, we have a special way that we do this meditation. We divide it into three parts. In the first part, which I so love, we ask our higher self, which is the spiritual essence of us all, each one to take form for you. It's your own inner voice, the intuitive essence of your soul. We ask it to take form, whatever form that takes, and we draw it into our body so that we can sit in meditation as our higher selves. And then I'll make a little OM sound so that you can push the button on your apparatus and meditate for as long as you like. The second part of the meditation is where we practice the art of radiance, by which we reach up into the cosmos and pull down a beautiful beam of pure white light down to the top of your head, down into your solar plexus, your stomach. This is the center of our emotional body. And from there, we laser that white light out across our planet and back up into the sky. We do it with our breath. You breathe in, you pull the light down. You exhale, and you raise the white light out from you. This extends your presence into the world. And it's a wonderful way to go into a deeper meditation. And you simply do that for the second time, part of the meditation. Then I'll do the OM again. And in the third part of the meditation, each week we uh, look at a way that we can take our peace, our calmness, our meditative energies, our expanded consciousness, and extend that into the world. This week, the focus will be support. Because around the world right now, people feel the need for support. And the wonderful thing about that is that we begin to realize that we can give support to others, and others can give support to us. And that's what happens when we recognize that we are a soul family. And so we'll ask humanity what color humanity needs from each of us, from you, in order to feel support and to know that in feeling that support, they can pass that on and look around and see to whom they can give support. It's such a lovely way to recognize purpose in life. And then there'll be an OM. And so let's begin our meditation. We'll start with a little breathing so that we, again, drop our brain into a slower state of alpha, which is the meditative state. Close your eyes. Breathe in through your nose. Hold at the top. Now exhale very slowly, almost as if you were whistling through your mouth. Once again, breathe in through your nose and exhale through your mouth. Feel your brain slowing down into alpha. And now ask your higher self, the intuitive essence of your soul, your own inner voice, your own wisdom, to take a form for you. It could be a rainbow, or a star, or a beam, a tree, a light, an animal, an equation. Just ask your higher self to take form and see what form it takes at this moment for you. And now, ask your higher self to touch the place in your body where you are holding your spiritual essence at this moment. Wherever you imagine that it touches you, where you are holding your spiritual essence at this moment, focus your consciousness there. Begin to breathe in and out as if you're opening that point in order to access and amplify that presence, your spiritual source. 
And now draw your higher self in through that point. Pull it into your body so that you can sit in meditation. Om. Reach up into the cosmos and as you inhale, pull down to you a beautiful beam of pure white light the fastest energy of creation. And now exhale that white light out from you and across our planet. Back up into the sky. As you breathe in, draw the white light down. Exhale it out across the planet, illuminating the planet as you exhale. And simply continue that pattern of breathing and allow it to take you into a deep meditative state. Take a deep breath and imagine that you could pull to your mind's eye all of the eight plus billion people on this planet and ask them what color, what frequency of light they need from you to feel supported at this time. Whatever color comes to you, just ask them, what is the color? Color is the cosmic language of communication. Take that first color, And again, reach up into the cosmos and pull exactly that color down through the top of your head, down into your stomach, your solar plexus, and laser that beautiful beam of color into all of humanity and feel them receiving that frequency of light that will bring them a sense of support at this moment. And just keep breathing it down and lasering it out to all humanity until you feel a shift that all of humanity is receiving that frequency of light and feeling supported. When we're supported, we feel courage, we feel safety, we feel connection. So feel that activation have a sense of support that you are giving into all humanity. Do it now. Take a deep breath into your body and open your eyes. Thank you for joining us. There actually is a second section to this meditation. It's called Knowings. And people from around the world send in questions every week that they would like for us to focus upon in order to bring about a sense of illumination, that we can share, that we can feel inside ourselves and and share with everyone who's communicating and connecting through this meditation. And Alison will tell us the questions that have come for this week. Alison? The first question is from Tel Aviv, Israel. Why is it so soul-shatteringly devastating when our faith is destroyed? Faith in God, people, government, etc. And how do we restore it? Hmm. On one hand, my friend, uh, remember that we are all here. Uh, My higher self calls us the cleanup crew. We're here to shift uh, from these outmoded ways of life and thought forms and, and constrictions and separation that have accompanied us through time immortal. And so, um, the answer that my Harrison would give to you would be, we, we learn, we grow in such a way that we recognize that uh, 
we can have compassion for governments, for religions, for, for others, uh, without that need that we've had before, that my life is connected to my religion, my life is connected to what uh, my government does. And so our lack of trust or our lack of faith in them, on one hand, is simply that which will propel us into the next octave of our lives in which my higher self says, you are your own teacher, you are your own priest, you are your own healer. And so the more that we recognize that, the more that we can, we can sort of cut the umbilical cord waiting to receive help from governments or churches or, or anyone else, but that we realize that we are participating and we have something to offer because we're powerful, because we, we have come with gifts and wisdom to share. And so the more that we trust ourselves, the more we can uh, extract the best of our religions, the best of our governments, the best of the people around us, uh, and, and connect to those aspects and those other aspects we can let fall away. And so don't be, don't be shattered uh, by the loss of faith in them. And just know that it's time to have faith inside yourself and in all humanity, that we will learn that it's not um, a dogma or a structure that someone else has created that says this is how you must live or who you must be, but that we have the wisdom as a soul family to select what serves the good of the whole and what does not, and to speak out not in violence or separation, but to speak out with that sense of, let us fix this, let us go on to the next octave, but let us participate, because that's why we're here. And so, what I would say to you is, for example, here's a little exercise in consciousness. Close your eyes for a moment, and now ask your body where it holds the wisdom to find the way through all of the disappointment, all of the disconnect, uh, from the outside world that, that cannot help us, that we cannot trust, that, that we see falling apart. Where is that energy in our bodies? You might see the place or hear the place or feel the place. Focus on that place and then ask it what frequency of light it needs to be released so that we can disconnect from that mm, sense of smallness, or again, that, that the world is what decides our life and our truth. No, we do. So ask that place in your body what color it needs to dissolve away all of that energy that blocks you from gathering together with those who, who want to help, who are not the good and the bad guys, but all of us. That's it. And feel that frequency of light coming into that place in your body and washing away that lack of faith, that dissolution of loss. No, we haven't lost. We have gone on from. You and I, all of us, are ready for a new kind of world, a new way of living, a kind of living that embraces and respects each and every human. Breathe deeply and open your eyes. So that's an exercise in consciousness you can do when you go to bed at night, and it'll help you to feel when you wake up in the morning, oh, here's, here's something that's happening in a government or a religion or a group of people. I have something to offer. I can send light, as we did in the first part of our meditation today. And then you will feel that uh, there is a place where uh, you trust you. Uh, trust is a kind of faith. Uh, it's a kind of knowing. And you stand by that, and you, you create it, and you make it grow. Great love. Allison? The second question is from Lewis, Delaware, in the USA. For Chris Griscom, I am asking about prejudice 
and the fact that some religions even promote it. Will you address a spiritual solution to dissolve it? With immense gratitude from Delaware. Mm. Wow, that's a segue from what we were just discussing. Yes, first of all, let's remember that, that religions grew up thousands and thousands and thousands of years ago at a time of tribes, at a time of a kind of a repetition of what's happening now of them and us, you know. And so the, the dogma of religions created that them and us, that um, you, you belong to us and those guys are dangerous. And so we, we, don't, we don't include them. But of course we all know that on this planet right now, Nature's teaching us that. We have to figure out how to be inclusive. And so uh, what I would say is that, um, again, as I said a moment ago, select out the, the, um, the teachings of any religion that serve, that serve an inclusive energy rather than create that prejudice. No, they can't get to heaven because, or, or, or my God against your God. God loves us, but not them. That's all old, old, old stuff that we can't uh, go on on our planet if we hold those things. Look at the wars that are happening right now. And I would say that most of the wars on this planet have that element of a spiritual uh, seeding that says, uh, us guys, but not those guys. And um, we, might, we might couch it in terms of uh, land or, or food or wealth or something. We have some excuse for it. But it boils down to a sense of prejudice, a sense that um, the, the most powerful in us, our connection to God, quote unquote, um, tells us to be a, a prejudice against others. No, there is no divine source. There is no God that teaches that. Remember that religions were created by humans. <laughs> by humans who had limitations thousands of years ago. And so their limitations do not have to be ours. We can go on from that and, and build that pure energetic that embraces rather than holds prejudice. Prejudice is just a way of saying, I'm better than you, so I'm safer than you, and I'm more beloved than you. That's an illusion. That's, that's, sometimes people in different cultures teach their children that. It's not only churches. Families and cultures teach our children those kinds of prejudices. They will not go into the future. And I am counting on the youth in the world who have access to each other to help their parents, to help their, their religions, their churches, their governments to get that point. We're no longer willing to hold prejudice because we have the power and the wisdom on a spiritual level to see that we are all, we are all connected and we truly are. And we have been here for eons of time. We have worn the colors of different races. We have worn the, the thought forms and, and the belief systems of different religions. And now it's time for us to clean house a little bit and take only what really could be said and, and lived by every human. Think of what that would be. It's something new that we haven't seen before, but you can find it. So I send you my love. And again, by the way, uh, people are always pointing out that, no, you're prejudiced because, because, uh, because God said this, uh, God said we're the chosen, etc., etc. So again, an exercise in consciousness is, where do I hold the need to be the ones chosen, to be above, to be prejudiced against the others, to put them down? Where do I hold that? Go to that place in your body. What color does that need to be released? You don't have to carry it. It's a psychogenetic inheritance from, from religious past, from cultural past, from racial past. It doesn't belong in our world. Great love. Allison. The last question is from Ustad, Sweden. Huh. Dear Chris, how do we cease to be a threat on any level 
So we make everyone we meet feel safe in our presence, regardless of country, race, or belief system. Oh, I love that. I love that question because I travel all the time, so it's very dear to my heart. And it's an easy one, actually. You know, we actually um, intuit, we feel each other. We actually feel if someone likes us, or if we're safe with someone, or, or we feel there's something off about that person. We feel all those things because we are psychically and spiritually uh, and karmically connected to each other. Knowing that, there is something that is easy to change, and that is a pattern that we have that comes from, from the child in us, not the true child in us, but the emotional child in us, who is always uh, looking to see if we, are, if we belong, if we are chosen. And so um, we're always waiting for the other guy to show us that they like us, uh, that, that they're going to uh, be the, the template of safety. So the answer to what you're talking about is so easy. You be the template. And the way I do that, sometimes I don't speak the language, but my eyes and my face and my smile, sometimes my touch, um, uh, tells people right away, and this is what's in my consciousness. I like you. I like you. Oh, look, we are the same. Um, um, I support you. Remember we did that exercise in the beginning? I support you. I, I extend that message through my whole presence to someone. And sometimes people, you know, will glance at you and look away. And I will send them through my own energy field uh, a kiss, a message. Says, I like you. And very often they will turn and look at me and I will smile at them. And then they will nod at me and they will smile back. That's how easy it is. All you have to be is be the source of connecting. Be the one who's not waiting for the others to make you safe, but you make them safe through your message that says, I like you. When people feel liked, when people feel heard, when people feel sane, seen, <laughs> then, then they will relax. They will relax and they will open their hearts and then you have this little connection. It doesn't matter whether it's an instant of passing by or if it's hours. And you can do it anywhere. I make that a part of my day. If I'm going shopping, if I'm buying food, if I'm standing in line someplace, wherever I am, whoever's around, I'm always sending them a message, hello, I like you. And they respond. You can do it too. Helping people feel safe is very easy. You're just saying, I'm like you, and you're like me, and we can be friends. Great love to each and all of you. Until next time.